Hey guys, new year, new chipset, new motherboard, let's go! Hey tech people, Rimatan here. A happy new year to all of you people and wishing you an awesome 2023. So Intel decides to drop a new motherboard with a new chipset on the third day of 2023 and Asus has passed me their ROG Strix B760-F motherboard. Even though I have received this motherboard for a while, but actually today is my first time taking a more in-depth look on this new motherboard. So I'd like to share this moment with you people. So let's do the unboxing together. Wi-Fi 6E antenna, the motherboard, three mounting pads for your M.2s, Asus lanyard and keychain, additional Q latch for your M.2s, additional thermal pad for your heat shields, M.2 heat shields, a pair of SATA cables, cable ties, thank you card for buying this motherboard, stickers, Asus web storage guide, and of course the motherboard manual. Okay, before we go on to the motherboard, I'm just going to come up with new naming conventions because the Intel boards have just a lot of 6 and 6s so it's a bit hard to pronounce. So going forward, I'm going to call the B760 as a B7. So if I'm going to talk about B660, it will be B6, Z790 as Z7. So B6, B7s and Z7s. Yeah, so this B7 features a very very cool, you know, gamer design. It's all black, but the very cool M.2 slot has a rainbow design so showing off some very cool black gamer vibes you know with some RGB seal that going on so I think I first see this on a B6 motherboard but ever since then uh, Asus has decided to come up with more colorful-ish you know designs I believe the logo on the IO shield will light up if you power it on can give you a try later to power on and see whether there's any form of ARGB or RGB on this motherboard so besides that uh, yeah similar to the red cam motherboard this board features a lot of uh, pixel gaming art. You're going to see the cherry, you know, uh, spaceships, space invaders. Yeah, so it's a very, very gamerish motherboard. It even has the words Silicondria Neuron, Silicon Neuron. I believe this is from ROG Strix's uh, backstory. Game characters, the game heroes come together. And this is probably their motto in the game to fight over the, the evil enemies they face during their adventures. You can see a lot of space art, space invader art, but that's not all. I think the best part is at the back. You can see very nice words, streaks. Wow, this is very, very cool design. Uh, very, very cool gamer design, but too bad when you put this motherboard in the case, you can't really see all of this at the back of the case. Not all cases have dual glass. Most of the nice parts usually are the front with the tempered glass and because this part usually is covered by all of your cable management. It's a slightly heavier motherboard because this uh, IO shield especially is quite heavy. Pretty okay, pretty standard for a mid-range motherboard such as this B760s. Okay, this board, similar to the Z7, is compatible with both 13th gen as well as 12th gen CPUs. So you can put your 13700Ks, 12600Ks onto this socket. Very interesting is coming from the B6, it features 8 plus 4 pin power. I'm not so sure about the overclocking part of it. Essentially, 8 pin and 4 pin provides you with almost 300 watts of power, but I believe a 3900K draws almost that kind of power even on simple loads. So perhaps you can let me know in the comments, is this actually enough power for 3900K? Would you actually use a 3900K on a B7 motherboard like this? Next, uh, this is a D5 motherboard. So you can put up to 4 DDR5 RAM sticks. But just note, I'm not sure if anyone actually has fixed this, whether you can get the full rated speed of your DDR5 RAM. For example, if your DDR5 RAM can do 6000 megahertz, if you put 4 sticks of 6000 megahertz RAM, will you get, for example, 64 gigs of 6000 megahertz after you XMP this motherboard. We're now in 2023. Hopefully, there will be a solution for this going forward. It'll be quite cool to be able to have the full rated speeds of four sticks, especially up to 128 gigs of RAM. Okay, this motherboard also has a new features that come on the new generation of ASUS motherboards. You have the Q release for your GPU as well as the Q latches on the M.2 slots. So this B7 motherboard has the usual I.O. You have the front USB Type-C, a front USB 3.2 Gen 1, also known as a 3.0, and two USB 2.0 headers giving you access up to four USB 2.0 ports. 
This motherboard also has three ARGB headers and one RGB headers. So you can make use of all of these headers to blink up this motherboard as well as your B760 PC build. For your fans, the CPU fan and CPU fan optional headers are around the same location. Slightly on the center now as compared to B6 and other motherboards where it tends to veer towards the right. I'm not sure if that's going to be a slight inconvenience because now your CPU fan cable has to travel a slightly longer distance. It also can be a good convenience because the fan headers are now closer to the cable management holes on your PC case. It looks a lot neater on one end, but also on the other hand, less neat because the cooler cable has to now travel a slightly longer distance. I don't know, <laughs> it's up to you to decide. AIO pump header as well as a char fan one header are also located next to the CPU socket. Very convenient. If your CPU fan header has to travel further, your AIO pump header does not need because it's now located conveniently below the CPU socket. And the char fan one header, which we usually use as an exhaust fan header, yeah, very convenient. So everything in your build will look a lot neater with this char fan one as well as the AIO pump headers locations. Okay, for your GPU as well as your PCI devices, this B7 motherboard has a similar expansion configuration as the B6 motherboard. So the first slot with the heat shield is a PCI 5.0 x16 slot, and this is where you put your GPU. It also has two 3.0 x1 slots and one 3.0 x16, which operates at 3.0 x4. So according to the manual, this is where you put your Thunderbolt card if you want to make use of Thunderbolt devices. But note, as mentioned, it's a 3.0 slot. Compared to the other boards that we have seen so far, some of these slots in the current generation are Gen 4. This is probably a design decision from ASUS because of the lower number of lanes that you may find on a B760 chipset. This slot cannot be Gen 4. You will probably lose half the bandwidth on a Gen 3 as compared to Gen 4. I'm not that familiar with Thunderbolt devices, Thunderbolt performance. So likewise, you can write down in the comments if you think there'll be a big performance difference between a Gen 3 and a Gen 4 for the Thunderbolt card. So going on to storage, this is where the B7 has a slight upgrade over the B6 motherboard. As compared to the B6 motherboard, which has only two 4.0 x4 and one 3.0 x4, this B7 now has three 4.0 x4 slots. So you can populate up to three SSDs, which operate at 4.0 x4 speeds. And likewise, it also has four SATA ports. It also features the one lane configuration that I mentioned in another video. So very nice. You don't have to meddle around with the SATA ports top and bottom when this motherboard is inside a case. So having this one line configuration makes it a lot easier to remove and plug in a new SATA cable if you want to have multiple SATA devices inside this PC build. And going on to the back I.O. If you have not seen already, motherboards of this class and generation have their I.O. heat shields permanently fixed onto the I.O. You don't have to worry about forgetting to put your I.O. shield when you install this motherboard into your PC case. For the ports, you have your usual HDMI and display port. Very convenient if you can't find a graphics card lying around. You can make use of the onboard graphics on the Intel processor, plug in the cable in the HDMI or display port, and you can do simple things like web surfing or simple workloads. The board also features six Type A ports, the ones in blue, 2.5G LAN or Ethernet port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 Type C port or Type C 20 gig port one 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port. This is 10 gigs, a BIOS flashback, clear CMOS button, very convenient. Don't need to jump the CMOS header or remove the CMOS battery unless you need to. Wi-Fi 60 connectors for your Wi-Fi 60 antenna, as well as the usual audio in and out ports. Next, we're gonna do our favorite PCIe, how much slots a GPU take experiment. What kind of name is that? So I have three cards here, uh, 4080, 3080 Strix White, correct? I think it's a 3080 Strix White. <laughs> and a Galax 2060 Super. This guy is four slots, almost three slots, two slots. Let's start with the small one, the two slot card. With this card, you can still use your two 3.0 X1 as well as the one 3.0 X4. But of course, I do recommend that you use this 3.0 X1 because it's too close to the fan blades. Okay, next, the three slot card. 
You can already see with the three slots, because of the length of the card, the B7 motherboard is already tilting to one side. It's kind of heavy and long. So yeah, the 3.0 X1 slot, first one is blocked off. You only have one more 3.0 X1 as well as this 3.0 X4. Yeah, pretty close to the fan blades. If you put your Thunderbolt card here, I'm not so sure how much heat will the Thunderbolt card emit as well as you're blocking off the fan passage for the fans, especially the one over here. The last one, the Monster 4080 4 slot card. Oh, so heavy. You can see the 4080 is a giant card. It's almost one quarter length coming out from the entire motherboard. You have blocked off the 3.0 X4 as well as the first 3.0 X1 slot, leaving you with only one X1 slot over here. So you can't put your Thunderbolt card. And it's also good to point out, if you ever ever need to remove your CMOS battery, you have to remove this guy first before you can access your CMOS battery. But anyway, with this Q release, it makes it so much easier to remove the GPU. You don't have to, especially with a card like that, reach into in between the M.2 slots Try to push down the lever to remove the card. This button just makes it all much convenient. Ja! Is there any RGB on this motherboard? So where is my power cable? Ah. I wish there was the power on button on this motherboard, but I guess we don't have one. Um... I guess there is a bit RGB color on the IO shield, very typical. I hope there's more, but uh, there's not. So it just looks like this guy's glowing and it just, this too gives a certain illusion there's some form of color on the motherboard. Okay, so I do not have the price for this B760-F yet. According to rumors, it's going to be more affordable compared to the Z70 counterparts. Even though it is a DDR5 motherboard, it is priced at a point where it's going to be more affordable and more accessible for people who want to make use of 12th gen and especially 13th gen processors. Even with all of the upgrades coming from B6 motherboard, this motherboard isn't going to be as expensive as the Z7 motherboards and it's going to be a lot easier on your wallet. So if you have a B660 motherboard, should you even get a motherboard like this? As mentioned, you can use both 12th and 13th gen CPUs on the B7 as well as the B6 motherboards. I will probably have to do an experiment to see how much of a performance difference if there is between a B7 and B6 motherboard for especially the 13th gen CPUs. But besides that, if you want to have three 4.0 X4 M.2 slots as well as kinda newer ports compared to USB 2 on the B6, you can opt for this B7 motherboard. But besides that, there's actually not much difference between this B7 and B6. It's still 16 plus 1 face power. The PCI slot arrangement is the same. It looks slightly more colorful. The VRM heat shields and the overall overclockability on this motherboard should be slightly better than the one on the B6. I've seen some rumors online. Price-wise, there is not going to be much difference between the B6 and the B7. So what all matters is the performance difference or gain that you may get using a B7 over the B6. And the next question is, how do you decide between this and a Z7 motherboard? So taking a look at something sort of similar, we have the ROG Strix Z790-F, which I have first featured in the 13700K review. Of course, a Z7 motherboard has more lanes to give you more features as compared to this B7 motherboard. To begin, you have one more PCIe 4.0 X4 slot as well as one more M.2 slot which runs at PCIe X4. So that's already a big advantage over the B7s, especially if you want to have more PCI devices or more SSDs on this motherboard. Yeah, you can have up to four NVMe SSDs which operate at full X4 speeds on a Z7 motherboard. On the front of the Z790-F motherboard, this USB front Type-C is not merely just a Type-C port. With the 30W delivery, you can actually charge your mobile devices using this USB Type-C port. You don't see this feature on the B760 motherboard, so if you want to have a place to charge your mobile phones, you can use this Type-C port to do so. Next, I forgot to mention, the B760-F only has four chassis fan haters, but the Z7 has five chassis fan haters. And lastly, on the back I.O., you get more ports such as more Gen 2 Type-A ports and one more Gen 2 Type-C ports. But of course, all of these additional features on the Z7 motherboard definitely adds up to cost. As of right now, even up to 
I think two months since 13th Gen's release, a Z7 motherboard is still relatively expensive, especially if you couple it with DDR5 RAM. If you want to have more features and more perhaps overclockability, the Z7 motherboard is the motherboard to go for. And likewise, similar to the B6 comparison, I would have to do a slight experiment to see how much performance gain or performance loss you have between the Z7 and the B7 motherboards. To conclude, B6 and B7, not much difference, but if you want to slightly future-proof, you can go for the B7. Between the B7 and Z7, the Z7 has more features over the B7, but of course, the Z7 will definitely cost more than the B7s. So hopefully with this first look and review, you can decide between the B6, B7, as well as a Z7 motherboard. So thank you to ASUS again for passing me this B7 motherboard to take a look in this third day of 2023. Like if you like this video, answer my questions in the comments below, watch the review of the 13 Samurai K if you haven't, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to take a look at another B7 motherboard. So come back for that.